You feeling good? That's good. How's your heart? I first had my heart attack in January of 2017. I'm not going to lie. I was pretty angry. Uh, I was on the upswing after a 25 year dark period. Uh, and this pretty big speed bump came along the way and slowed me down. Mostly, I was pretty angry at myself. At the time, Helen and I thought that I had a chest cold or something, and I actually drove myself down to the VA hospital in my trusty Ford Ranger. I suspected more than that, however. I didn't voice my concerns to Helen or Abby. She needed to be rested up that night because Abby had a basketball tournament the following day and she needed at least one functional parent. You may remember years ago, I had a online radio show on Saturday mornings called Drop Zone America with Airborne Run. And one of the episodes in particular, we actually broke the story about the Phoenix VA being ground zero for these lists and all these warfighters dying, waiting for help. Um, a buddy of mine was a whistleblower there, and my opinion at the time was pretty crappy about the VA. Not going to lie. This night would be different, though, because my visit at the VA hospital was nothing short of miraculous. I was welcomed in and immediately made comfortable. After hooking me up to the EKG, the doctor said, well, you're having a heart attack. And my gut reaction came out like verbal diarrhea. Shut up, I said to the doctor. He said, I'm afraid so, my friend, but you're in the best of hands. And though I was coming out of a deep, long season, neck deep in my own pride, I'm glad I went in early enough. And he said, we got there early enough to take care of it. I was in my first three years of my faith, and that's a pretty wobbly time for anybody. And I'm not going to say it didn't give me somewhat of a crisis of faith. I had been through three combat engagements, hundreds of firefights, five kids, an ex-wife, but this time... It felt like death knew where I lived, like it had my address and it had come knocking. It had. It was a great opportunity for me as I was coached through this new phase of my life through a dear friend who had suffered a heart attack with open heart surgery simultaneously at a hospital across town. Thanks, Jazzy. You know who you are. I really felt better and had better circulation in my legs and feet. I realized this was a benchmark moment, much like the bonus material at the end of a movie. Most folks hang out because they expect it to be good. You know, that's back when we used to go to movie theaters and socialize in public and stuff. Yeah, you know, tell your grandkids about it. But every day from then to now falls into what I described as my bonus material. And I intended on making it worthy of watching. It's a gift from God in its truest form. And I will never take that gift for granted again. Recently, a friend of ours, Michael, suffered a heart attack. And much like me, the process went very quickly. Within 48 hours, he was out of the hospital and back home again. Look at his split. Modern medicine is truly amazing. And lest we forget, it is also an extremely valuable gift from God. He's now home doing well, and we wish him the best. And we can't wait to see your bonus material, brother. We know it's going to be awesome. Michael Downs, ladies and gentlemen. Love you, brother. This event also had an unattended side effect at least as far as I was concerned. It, it opened my eyes to an internal prejudice that I didn't even realize I was still hanging on to. It forced me to look quite literally into my own heart.
Did the following morning, I was wheeled into the surgical suite where my gurney was placed next to an 80 inch big screen TV suspended from the ceiling. I felt like I was on the set of Star Wars and I really didn't understand what was going on because the meds were starting to take effect. And as the anesthesia started to set in, I was drowsy, but not completely unconscious. As the doctor injected the dye into my IV and pointed at the screen to show me my own heart, I was just completely blown away. I'm sure it didn't last very long in reality, but it felt like it took forever ever for me to fade off and drift off to sleep. Being pretty well traveled over the years, courtesy of Uncle Sam, I even, though seriously loopy at this point, was able to discern an accent coming from my doctor. At that point in our nation's history, we had not yet defeated the ISIS Caliphate and troops were still suffering the damage of residual effects of these violently animalistic people and we're doing some pretty horrible things to other human beings. People of faith, Christians, I see it. I don't think I'm alone on this. Simply put, I hated ISIS. But the reality is, God loves ISIS as much as he loves you and me. That chance for redemption is there for everyone. Fact. Early the following morning, I was wheeled into the surgical suite where my gurney was placed next to an 80-inch big screen TV suspended from the ceiling. I felt like I was on the set of Star Wars and I really didn't understand what was going on because the meds were starting to take effect. And as the anesthesia started to set in, I was drowsy, but not completely unconscious. As the doctor injected the dye into my IV and pointed at the screen to show me my own heart, I was just completely blown away. I turned my head over to the right-hand side, which seemed like one of the hardest things I'd ever done at that point, and looked up at my doctor. Truth be told, he looked like every Hodge I'd ever seen. I'm pretty good with accents. And I've been known to pull out a Somali dialect or two even here and there from time to time. But I was rolling a donut on this one. And just like that, it came flying out. I hear an accent, Doc. Uh... Where are you from? Syria, he replied. Lights out. And that's the last thing I remember until I woke up. Well played, God. Well played indeed.